return Welcome to your final resting Welcome back to Modern Art Blitz. I'm your host, Matt Gleason. In the Skechers seat, my curatorial assistant, Aliza. And this is one of her pencils. I know we can't get a close up, but you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to run up to my. I'm, 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 I'm going there. I'm going there. Here, look at that. Look at that. Hey, you know, if you want, I could buy you a couple pencils. I'll splurge. I'll splurge, okay? <laughs> Look at him. Oh, he's such a special little, oh geez. Okay, well, uh, we're back and uh, my guest today in this segment is an international superstar of, I want to say low brow art and he might crush me like a bug for calling it that. New brow. Uh, new brow, oh yeah. God, new, remember middle brow? <laughs> okay. Luna brow. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Jeff Gillette. I'm on TV, Mom! <laughs> My mom's dead, but anyway. Do you prefer Jeffrey or Jeff? Jeff. Jeff. Is, yeah. Does it say Jeffrey on the museum yeah. placard? Do you prefer Matthew or Matt? Oh, God. If you call me Matthew, you, it's, you're a cop, a judge, or my mom. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. yeah. Okay. So, so uh, Jeff, now you are a veteran of the Southern California art scene. Yes, from about 1992 when I moved here from Detroit. You moved here from Detroit? Yeah, well, outside of Detroit. Did you grow up in, what, what, what town did you grow uh, up in? Uh, it's outside of Pontiac. So Pontiac's like a little Detroit. And a I little lived in Detroit. the suburbs my whole life. They named a car Pontiac. I used to work at the factory for a year. And that's what compelled me to go to college. You decided so. working in a car factory is just not where it's at? Yeah, it was horrible. Oh yeah? Good money, but it was just mind numbing. So yeah. you would rather have the quality of life and less money than the good money and just the... the no, just what, came, what made me come out here was lack of snow. I hated winter. I went through over 30 Michigan winters and I said, I'm done. I'd rather shovel earthquake debris than snow. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. well, then we can blame all the traffic on. People like you who move here, <laughs> well, we all, we all came from somewhere else, right? So um, we are looking at one of your paintings yeah. and you have become quite famous, I must say, All right. for these paintings. They are of slums. Yes. And tell me about what inspired you to paint slums. Was, I think, it, was it from being from Detroit? Well, I made a bunch of money working a year at Pontiac Motors, and my friends that were smart with money went into businesses or bought houses. I took the money and blew it on travel. So I went through India, Nepal, and Europe on my cash. And when I went to India, I went to Calcutta, and I saw the seething, horrible poverty, and it just stuck in me like glue. And I've been fascinated and just, I know, it's become my muse. So I go back often and get more experiences, and I'm getting deeper and deeper into the experience itself. Poverty is your muse. Not so much poverty, it's more, I like the architecture. The, ar the, the architecture of squalor. Yeah, the architecture of necessity. It's like you're going to make a house with whatever is available. Ah. There's a piece of something down there, you're going to pick it up and that becomes, you know, living room wall. Okay. 
And so you've been, I mean, most people go to the tourist areas. Well, now, now slum touring is an industry. Oh, no, in really? India, in India and in the Philippines, and I think they're starting one in Peru, too. Slum touring? Yeah, it's big now. Wow. Now, yeah. now have you ever been to a Brazilian favela? Yes. And are those, they supposedly have a dangerous element to them? I was there with a friend of the artist Sandal Burke. Yeah. He was down there in the Fulbright, and he had this friend of his, and he took us up and I guess the police had just taken over this one and they were taking the electric, all the, all the lines down and putting meters up so that people couldn't steal electricity anymore. And we had some guy take us all the way up and it happened to be the same slum that Michael J Jackson did a video in. Okay. So I, they actually are gonna put a little a shrine. A shrine for yeah. Michael Jackson? Yeah. Okay, now, <laughs> now one thing, one element here, it's right behind my shoulder, let me get out of the way, is, uh, oh, well, I didn't mean to disappear there, but um, is Mickey Mouse uh, upside down and you've had a, yeah kind of a, uh, I don't want to say a love-hate relationship with Disney, you kind of had a hate-hate relationship with Disney. What, what, is, what is the use of the Disney imagery? Uh, what, do you, what are you doing there? To me, it's, it's not so much hate or anger, it's, it's more fascination with the juxtaposition of supposedly the happiest place on earth, okay. which, which I would consider the juxtaposition with the uh, heaviest maybe harshest place on earth. The saddest place on earth. Yeah, well, you know what? They're not that sad. The more I investigate and spend time in there, those people have their religion, they have their intact families, their houses are so small that they're outside all the time, so they have community, their villages, and socially, they're extremely happy. Very uncomfortable, very cramped. They don't have comforts like going to the doctor or dentist like we do, but they have each other. Perfect life till you have a toothache. Yeah, and, and what I do is I compare the smiling faces I see in the slums to the pissed off people I see on the freeway on the way, on the way to work, and I wonder. Okay. I, always like, I love it when there's like people screaming at their kids and their kids are screaming back at Disneyland. It's like, here you are, you know. I, <laughs> yeah. yeah. My so, wife and I were on a plane once and there was a, a woman scolding her child. She'd say, I'm begging you. I'm saying, yeah. My dad wouldn't beg me. I'd yeah. beg my dad. Hey, dad, beg. I got the point now. It, it wasn't be, be, belting is near begging in the dictionary. Yeah. But um, okay, so now here, this one has the uh, very traditional freeway uh, freeway on ramp. Uh, yeah, the the first two slides were actual. I guess when I got um, invited to the Dismaland thing, I thought, well, it's time for me in my mid fifties to do some street art. So I had already had a plan to go to India. And I just made some stencils and I have a, a guide there that was actually turned into an art assistant. His name's Hashim. And we went around and we put these stencils up and painted them and I don't know. That was the one before this is my idea to turn it upside down, but since it was on someone's house, I didn't want to turn it upside down. Oh, uh, okay. Because we're so, in the middle of painting it, and then the owner comes by and starts, ah, what are you doing? You can't do it. It's like oh, it's street, the, the goal <laughs> Jeff, You said it was okay. Jeff, but, the goal of street art is to not get caught. <laughs> oh yeah, there's like 80 people watching you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so since you mentioned it, uh, this would be a good time to talk about what was Dismaland? Dismaland started off as a surprise Facebook message from someone, I think in LA. They said, we got some exciting news for you. Is there a private way we can converse? So I gave them my email address. A couple weeks go by and I go, so what, what's up? They go, Holly's gonna get a hold of you. So Holly Cushing, who is Banksy's manager, got a hold of me and says, Banksy wants to buy a piece of yours. So I'm cool, all right, that's cool. So I just happened to have it. I used to show it at, I think I showed it before at James Gray in, uh, in Bergamo. And I still had it in the closet, so I sold it to him. And then the next email came from him saying, come on out, we're gonna do an abandoned theme park thing in the UK. Do you wanna come out and show work in it and hang out? And I go, hey, wow. yeah. I go, yeah. So he said, do six pieces. He said, go bigger. And I was working. So at some point, it, was, it wasn't quick back and forth, but I would send them images of work in progress. And he was almost critiquing me, which was kind of fun. Wow. And at some point, he said, no Mickeys. So I mean, I had big Mickeys everywhere. And so really? Why did he say no Mickeys? He said, for obvious reasons. And I guess they were a little, a little uh, wary of of location. having a direct Disney uh, yeah. representation. So what did Which, you do? So I went in and, and obliterated them from all my paintings, except I would hide them in the debris in every painting. Ah. So when I, when I was, when I was uh, interviewed by CNN, they chose me to represent him as the American. And uh, 
I remember I, t I talked to them and they zoomed right on that little teeny Mickey Mouse. I mean, so it takes up the whole screen. So that was kind of <laughs> But later on, Banksy See, put in a Mickey Mouse of his own. Uh, After it opened, uh, I noticed it was like a, like a boa constrictor. Who yeah, they probably Mickey. checked it with legal, you know. Yeah. So. So, so how was word? So did you get to meet Banksy? Um, my wife and I were told, we were working, we were making all the ears. So we were, we were uh, fabricating those, using all this hot glue, and then she was spray painting them all. And God, it was hard work. We did that for two days because I opened my big mouth and said, hey, we're here. We have nothing to do. So they, oh, we got a job for you. Oh, boy. So we L did that for gotta two love days. That. Gotta live that communism. Okay. And at the, at the end of the day, it's about one in the morning. We were just beat and just oh, want to get back to the hotel. We had to walk like half a mile there too. So they go, no, you want to go check out inside the castle because he had that Disneyland castle made out of the crates. And they said, you got to go check it out. And we're like, oh, we don't, we'll check it out. No, go now. Because we knew Banksy was there at night. And it was late at night, so we went in there. And everyone in there had these, had these security kind of uh, vests on that were fluorescent so you don't get hit by the earth moving equipment, except this one guy. Had glasses on. I think his hair is kind of blondish. I didn't look at him real closely, but I remember my wife walked by and that he had his installation inside. And she goes, this is brilliant. And he goes, thank you. And that was the, our only interchange. Ooh. Unfortunately, to this day, we're hitting ourselves. Say, Why didn't we talk to him? But it yeah. was really, really kind of high energy. And it seemed like there was a lot of stress because this was the last day and the next day was press day. And it was like, I knew they weren't done yet. So it was like scary. So. Well, with Banksy, press day is the most important day. Yeah. yeah. So, so you, you, you know, now you got a lot of press. Did that help your career? Absolutely. I got, I got shows in, um, the, in Europe in two places. So I got a, a gallery in London and I was in New Art, which is fantastic. That's one of the most fun we've ever had with a, like an art thing. So. And, and you've been selling art ever since? Yeah. You were selling art before though. I sold a piece last night. I'm like, what, in Santa Ana. Really? Oh, yeah. in Santa, oh at, at, at yeah. Oka, Oka. you're uh, in yeah, the show was, at Oka. Yeah, with my wife. We're what's, what's the name of the show again? What's the name of it? I don't know if there's a name. There's, there's no name. name. The, sh the show with no name? Yeah, there is a name, but I forgot I've been it. through the desert yeah. on a show with no name. Okay, so. <laughs> Um, so what are we looking at here? This is a, um, like everyone says I'm anti-Disney, so I've, I've done a series of these. It's, it's like a post-apocalyptic landscape, like post-Hiroshima. And the only thing that's existing is a billboard with a character on it. And I was using Disney characters. So if I'm anti-Disney, my, my message is like, everything's gonna be ashes except Mickey Mouse or Minnie Mouse. So I don't think that's anti-Disney. But after um, Dismaland, I kind of, you know, I've been kind of appropriating from Disney. I thought, well, I'm going to appropriate from Banksy a little bit. So, so that's Banksy's rat? Yeah. Okay. And I don't think they like that. I think they, I talked to Holly on the phone and she wasn't too happy about it. Oh, so they but, love doing it to other people, but they don't like it done to themselves. Yeah, well, whatever. So, so <laughs> now, now the original all-time anti-Disney artist was Lynn Folks. You've seen his stuff, right? Yeah, I love his stuff. Love the guy. He's a yeah. wonderful person. He's kind of a cranky old guy, you know? Nah, he's not cranky to us. He's nice. Really? Yeah. Yeah, he's nice to me, but he's still cranky to me too. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> um, the more successful he's gotten, though, the less cranky he's gotten, yeah. right? Love you, Lynn. Hey, so, so um, and what year was this, do you know? This was uh, probably last year. Last year? Yeah. Okay. And so you've got this wonderful patina down here. Look at my, or my feet. Yeah, uh, walking in the... Here, yeah. We're walking in the slum. And yeah. this is... When you're in an actual slum, and I, I, I can't say I've ever been in a third world slum, um, but I do live in Los Angeles. <laughs> so um, so, so what, when, you're, when you're in a slum, what, what is all that stuff? Well, this is, this is a post-apocalyptic debris, so this is like broken concrete and ashes, anything that burned. When you look at the Hiroshima photographs, that's what I kind of base them on. So okay. I, so I might have those as a visual on maybe a PowerPoint as I'm painting this. But I'm also doing like landfills, and that's more fun, because these are more geometric, so it's like shattered concrete. Okay. But when I do my uh, landfills, it's more organic, and you know how plastic bags can kind of undulate through the forms, and you get the uh -huh. little rounded shapes. and. I don't know, that's kind of, it's two different kinds of the same texture, but one's sharper geometry than the other. So, so, uh, so do you ever, you know, when you're, when you're visiting the slums, do you have to walk, walk through a lot of this oh, stuff? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah? You gotta watch out that you don't step knee deep in the open sewers. Oh dear. Oh, hell yeah. So it's, it's good to have a guide. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, I, they say, that, I think in the new guidebooks, they say go ahead, but don't take pictures. Really? So that's why I've always got a guide that was outside the company. I go, I'm an artist. I'm getting material to paint from. I want to yeah. take some pictures that I can use. So I can't use the companies because they have that strict no photography. Have policy. you ever been accused of cultural tourism? 
Um, like exploitation. Yeah. Has anybody ever any gone after gone off you? Never that? heard of it. Except I brought it up about myself trying to kind of circumvent that. Oh yeah. Because I want to make yourself I don't, yourself think, it's I don't think it's true because no. Yeah. Because I mean, it's the world. I, the world's out there. You're just yeah. going. You're just you know. And so, uh, uh, what's what's our next image here? Oh. Uh oh. Now what's what's this one? This is playing anagrams. I used to play anagrams with, uh, is that where you take the letters and you yes, mix them Yes, anagrams, yeah. yes. So it had to start with a D, and then I'd only, I, I started off, I'd only take the letters and they had to be in order, so I could only get words like died. Uh, dead comes out. Uh, this is the, you take Disney, this is the entrance to yeah. Disneyland historically. Yeah, it's the old sign. They don't have the sign up. Some, some actor bought it and got it in his backyard. Really? Yeah. Um, but now, nowadays, I just take any letters and just use them. So, doesn't even have to start with D. I got an F one out there somewhere. You got an F one? Yeah. Okay. So, so, <laughs> so, are you? I mean, are you looking at this? Or, or is America going to become the next third world? Is that is that the is that the mean, meditation? What do you mean become? Huh? What do you mean become? Oh, oh okay. All okay. right. Except, well, it's like as soon as we cross from Orange County over into LA County, that's when we notice it most. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Hey! Oh, <laughs> you brought it up hey! before. Oh, I'm kidding. Oh, I'm kidding. Got a little OC, uh, OC <laughs> LA <laughs> thing. Eh? Um, Ooh, so, gotcha. Um, <laughs> and and um, again, just to clarify, are these oil paintings or acrylic? Uh, both. What do, you, what do you work in? I like acrylic most. more because I can work inside. Yeah. Oil, I work out in the garage and it's kind of cold and I got the cat box right there. Because so. of the smell? I mean, just yeah, the smell the of the oil, oil yeah, not the smell of the cat box. Well, both of them. <laughs> They're both toxic. Yeah, so. very, you know, the <laughs> Especially when the cat just uses it right while I'm in there. Yeah, it's like, okay. I guess well, I got to clean it. So, so uh, <laughs> and, and, and uh, how, long, how long have you been painting, would you say? I, what's weird is I tell my students I'm also a high school teacher for almost 25 years in Orange County, is I tell my students that I never seriously painted until I moved out here. And I was like 32 or 33 when I started. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, it's, I, I dabbled, I just could never get, I never had a painting class, not in high school, not in college, my undergrad. I mean, when you take wow. them in your graduates, like, okay, well, this is a painting class, but it's like, you're gonna come in and show work. Oh, how do you glaze? What's glazing? No, no. Did you, you ever know. hire somebody to teach you these methods or no. go on? We're about you, ready to. YouTube. We got this guy that does these really cool oil paintings in Orange County that yeah. we're talking to. But Okay, you want to get a little uh, tighter? I don't know. I, I'm happy with what I'm doing, but I'd like to learn some of the old techniques. Have you ever made an abstract painting just for kids? Yeah, and I Could hate them. Splatter. They're fun, but you look at them, it's like, all right. You don't, I'll you, do what I do a you lot. You go to the museum, you, you don't like shit. abstract paintings? I love them. I love the stuff like Tuppies and Rauschenberg is my favorite. Oh, but it's just not me. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a, I, a, I can't do it. American icon. Well, and you may soon be an American icon yeah. because you are an international, an internationally exhibiting and showing artist. And I'm thrilled to have you on Modern Art Blitz as a guest. And we have to see what came out of the Skechers seat. Wow, wow, wow. All right, my hair's all on one side. <laughs> all right, yeah, here, here yeah, we go. Little, all right, let's see. Can I plug my show there. coming up? Yeah, plug it, plug away. Right next door to your gallery. Gregorio Escalante Gallery. Is going to be a show in on Chinatown. Total Dismay, Chinatown. When uh, is that? It's going to be the weekend of Memorial Day. Do you have a show coming Memorial up? Memorial Day weekend, the 27th, 27th of May. Yeah, how December. do I know it's the 27th? Because I've got a show opening then, too. What's your show going to be? Wow, uh, we have a solo show by Laviel Campbell, so that'll be yeah. great. Now, is, All it, right. is it dismal like mine's going to be? Um, no, I'd so like to think they can, it's they can leave mine unhappy and go over yours, yours and cheer up. Yours will make them think, and mine will make them, give them joy. But um, right. thank you so much for being right, our guest on Modern Art Blitz. We'll be back right after this. Thing. 